Rant number three is about ignoring the power of video. Well, it's getting easier now because, Frank, fortunately, Facebook have, have discovered video. Fantastic. Well done, guys. You got there in the end. Um, if we, they could have listened to us, we might have been able to help them get there a little bit earlier. But now I think we, people are now beginning to re-believe in video. But we had, you know, we had a decade of being told that kind of that's all a bit old hat and really where the action is, is these targeted uh, display messages, all using careful, careful and clever data. So we all know about the enormous growth of time people spend online. But as I said to you, it's actually showing signs of moderating the UK. I think we are really getting to a mature position now. But over the last decade or so, it's quadrupled. But I'm at the risk of, of, of um, sounding uh, curmudgeonly about this. The mistake to make is to believe that all online time is accessible to the advertiser. Now, I'm going to sound like Mark Ritson here because I think he's absolutely right and I'm a great fan of Mark Ritson. What we have to remember is that about two-thirds of the time people spend online, and this is UK data from an enormous study, it's a single-source single, single um, uh, source study that, that can describe the exact way in which consumers in the UK use media. Not very popular with the digital community, I hasten to add. It has all sorts of unfortunate truths that it tells. But what it tells us very simply is that about two-thirds of people's online time is actually spent in social messaging. And if you've ever listened to Mark Ritson talk about this, he's absolutely right. We resent commercial intrusion during uh, social networking times. We do not want it. I do not want my uh, social networking time interrupted with commercial messages. That's why we've had the ad blocking revolution with more than a billion installed bits of software around the world. Because people are pissed off with this. Facebook now know that and are reining back on this. So the more accessible part of my body is probably just that third. The orange bit is probably mostly gaming, searching, video, uh, shopping and transacting. During those periods of time, we, we are much more susceptible, we are much more accepting of, um, of commercial intrusion, if you want to use that word. But, you know, we've had, again, 20 years now of being told that the money should follow the time spent online. We hear that time and time again. Well, bullshit, you know. There's no point in spending money where people resent your, um, your commercial intrusion. So I've already said that reach is still vital, mass marketing still lives, so we should have media that give us broad reach in two senses. This is UK data. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an equivalent chart for, the New, for New Zealand in a moment. Um, though I can't populate it with quite so many points as we can in the UK with this data. So what really matters is two things. One, that we get huge weekly reach of adults, because mass marketing is all about reach. But also, we want, to, we want them to be very engaged in that medium, we want them to spend lots of time watching that medium, because that gives us lots of opportunities to, uh, to um, message, send our messages to them. But also, it shows that the medium is a very engaging and important one to them. Video dominates this particularly broadcast TV. It remains the medium par excellence for reach in those two senses. Nothing else comes close. Online uh, video is growing, and it's increasingly important. It's a useful extra build on broadcast TV. I'm, I'm not going to sell you an either or. It's an and situation that we should be using. Um, and social media, of course, is still quite a long way down that, both in terms of reach and average hours spent per day. But we should always remember the writs and pushback. Ah, but the guys in digital say, what about millennials? They so don't watch TV. You know, this is, this is irrelevant. What about millennials? To which I say, you are so talking bollocks. Um, yes, of course, millennials watch less TV. They, younger people have always watched less TV than older people because, you know, they ain't got mortgages, they ain't got kids, and possibly they ain't got jobs. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons. They're out, you know, having a fun time, which we elderly curmudgeons are, of course, sadly denied. Um, uh, so, yeah, lots of things become more important. But again, just do remember the Mark Ritz and pushback. All of that time that they are using social media is not, strictly speaking, commercially available. So things do change. Things do change. But then there's a big question mark over whether this will carry right through as they get older. Some of it will. Digital natives will never be the same as pre-digital natives, of course. But it doesn't mean to say that all of these behaviours will be carried absolutely through 
rigidly to older age. Uh, what about the picture in New Zealand? Well, I can't quite build such a map, but you do, the data points I can put on it show exactly the same. They are amazingly consistent with the UK picture. Live and time shifted TV very much in the top right quadrant of that, that chart, which is where we want to be for success. Um, uh, online video very much to the left, video on demand. Again, all of these things usefully contributing, but not yet challenging. And I'm sure we would find, if we could put social media on that chart, it would be more or less the same. Because I've done this, I've looked at these charts for you know, Canada and the US, and they don't actually differ that much, despite what we're told. This is not what we are told by the guys in digital. So um, video consumption particularly is really important. I've said that powerful long-term brand building is an emotional game, and we need an emotional medium. And there is nothing more emotional than the video medium. Picture and sound, music, all coming together. There is nothing else like it. So it's really, really important. So let's just look at how, in the UK, and I'll just make some comments about how things are slightly different in New Zealand to this, but not importantly different in a minute. We're going to look at two audiences, uh, all individuals who watch about four and a half hours of video a day in the UK, and the 16 to 24s who, because they've got other things to do, watch about three and a half hours of video, but a lot of video even so. Let's break it down. So the likes of YouTube, Facebook, and other, shall we say, um, uh, acceptable online video account for probably just over 10% of all individuals and around about 20% of the younger age group. I should point out that my colleagues at Google challenge that. They think this underrepresents uh, online video. They would say that, wouldn't they? Have they produced any audited, transparent, you know, fully acceptable data to challenge it? Hell no. Um, we'll get it one day, we will get it one day. But, but this is not dominant, this is a useful and an important contribution to video viewing, but this is not dominant yet and won't be for a long time. The next thing I put up, I'm not, this isn't a joke, I'm putting up the, you know, the, the, the sleaze element of online video for a very simple reason. This is a big, big issue in the UK right now. We've got enormous numbers of family brand advertisers pulling their budgets from the Google platform because they have, it's been revealed that their advertising is appearing alongside some really sleazy co uh, content. Programmatic buys are completely ill-policed, um, and there seems to be no way that these players can control it. So they've basically said to Google, until you fix your, your, um, put your house in order, we're pulling the budget. The British government has pulled all its expenditure um, on... Uh, uh, on Google platform for the simple reason that it discovered that Royal Navy recruitment advertising was funding terrorist websites through programmatic buys. It doesn't get any worse, believe me. So this is a real issue for a lot of advertisers, um, uh, one we shouldn't uh, forget. There's a big slug of online video that we probably want to associate ourselves too much with, at least not in public. Um, there's a whole chunk of subscription VOD and DVD, which is more important in the New Zealand market than it is in the UK market at the moment, from your figures. But it remains the same. I mean, the online video is very similar in New Zealand and, and the UK. But the big chunk that remains is essentially TV, either live TV, playback TV, or broadcast a video on demand. About three quarters of video viewing by all adults and comfortably more than a half of this younger age group. So really do not believe it when people say to you that young people don't watch TV anymore. It's just crap. So given all that, you might expect that TV, in fact, if we're objective and we, we look at the evidence, TV shouldn't be suffering too badly. In fact, it's an extremely effective medium that is getting more effective, not less effective. So here we're comparing the Web 1.0 period with the Web 2.0, essentially. And what you see is that TV, measured in this metric, which is um, the number of very large business effects, a broad success metric that correlates extremely strongly with profit growth, as you will see later in my presentation. Um, this has grown over time, not got weaker. TV is not losing its power or its grip on marketing success. It is strengthening it for a lot of reasons, a few of which I'm about to take you through. Um, but it's very much connected with the amazing ability of TV to harness a lot of the digital media that are trying to kill it and not succeeding but it works very powerfully um, with digital. Let's just look at um, one other important um, achievement of TV. We can compare those campaigns that didn't use TV with those that did, and this is this all important metric of market share growth. So campaigns using TV are able to drive more than twice as much share growth as those without. This is an enormous uplift. 
I've put DRTV on there just to make another point. I mean, DRTV is TV's version of going short term, of course. We all know DRTV. And a very, very powerful activation medium it is. But of course, it is not as powerful as brand TV in the long term. It can never be. It's about short term effects. Uh, it will never be as powerful. But it's very useful for those of us who want to get short term effects. And again, often overlooked. Why is TV getting more effective? Well, partly because video on demand has been a, a big growing uh, uh, platform uh, around the world. It enables us to deliver our advertising message at the time of the consumer's cho cho choice, you know, with the content of the consumer's choice. So it enhances our, our kind of advertising buy, if you like, and creates a, a very significant uplift effectiveness, about a third. But online video is also another wonderfully um, powerful force that helps TV. The John Lewis case study makes wonderful use of online video. It's a small part of their budget spend, but they use it. And they create special content for online video to ensure that the uh, campaign is shared and picked up and talked about as much as possible online as well as offline. So if we look at um, <coughs> online video, it is emerging as a very useful medium in its own right. Nowhere near on the scale or power of TV, of course. But I don't want to get drawn into some kind of macho, TV's has got a bigger one than online video. That's, that's not the point I want to make. The okay? point I want to make here is that the win-win is to use both, like John Lewis did. We use them both. We keep TV absolutely as the core, and we use some, uh, some of our brand building money to exploit that online. Here's a great example of a campaign, global campaign, that does exactly that. So this is Snickers. This is how they spend their budget globally. So it's about 18% on online video, which is quite big, but bear in mind it's a global market. A lot of developing um, markets, uh, online video is, is genuinely very much more important because of the status of TV in those categories. But the, but the rest of the budget, about 82%, is spent on one form of TV or another one's or cinema. Worth just pausing for a moment to remember that Snickers, the Mars campaign, is a family-owned company. These guys know all about the long term. Anyone who's worked on a a Mars brand knows you don't screw around with the future of a Mars brand. It's going to be their grandson's salary. You don't do it. So, and this is a huge strength for the Mars organization. It's a huge strength also of a lot of German businesses like Aldi and Lidl that can take on really aggressive categories like retail and win because they've got the freedom to take the long term. And that delivers enormous value to marketing. Uh, so let's, you, you probably know the campaign, but let's just look at one of their latest and their big global success story uh, for Snickers. Yeah, Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers, get some nuts. Now, I have to apologize that Britain's greatest export to marketing is Mr. Bean. But anyway, that's another matter. But it's been hugely successful. Um, in the first two years of this campaign, more than a third of a billion uh, in incremental sales. It's completely transformed the trajectory of that brand around the world. So all sorts of very good reasons why we should um, be uh, remembering the power of video and investing in video. But of course, it's all down to the data we use to measure success. And in a world that is overpopulated with short-term data and short-term metrics, of course, we are easily misled. Short-term data can be very, very misleading. This is what happens if you take short-term campaigns and you measure success with a short-term metric. You come to the conclusion that TV doesn't work. It's exactly the kind of data, of course, that the sales guys at Google, I'm sure, use regularly when they go and make sales presentations, mostly to CEOs and CFOs. 
it says don't use TV. But of course, if we measure success over the longer term, with a long-term metric, we come to precisely the opposite conclusion. And as sure as night follows day, this, we will always get this. What we need to do for short-term success, in every way we can look at, is the opposite to what we need to do for long-term success. Long-term success is, says use TV, short-term success says don't. Of course, we could always use DRTV if our category is appropriate to that. But again, you know, uh, uh, the world actually needs more activation media like I need a bullet in the head. We've got them coming out of our ears. It's brand building media that are so fantastic. Now, very, very conveniently, um, short term data, short term metrics uh, flatter search wonderfully. I mean, search is a brilliant activation medium. The world has seen nothing like it before. It, measured over the short term, the short term metric, it is an enormous contributor to uh, activation effects. But again, you know, if we see the effect of adding search into a campaign. Most, most brands, most businesses these days do some amount of search. Usually goes through a different side of the marketing. Often marketers have no idea what their companies are spending on search. It's sold in direct by the guys at Google, usually to the chief exec and the CFO for all sorts of very canny reasons. But so what we find is if we start to add more search to our campaign, it actually undermines long-term success because to fund this, we'll have to pull budget from the proven brand building medium that we were using, such as TV. So we find we sacrifice long-term success in order to drive short-term success. The same is true of social. It's not, but social is probably beginning to change. As social becomes more and more of a video-dominated medium, it has the potential, I think, to start playing more strongly in the um, uh, brand-building medium. But I think Facebook have got a lot to do to prove to us to that, and at the very least, they've got to give us some, some metrics we can trust in terms of video viewing and the impact of it. So let's just look, what's the cost of short-termism in the sense of video viewing? And, and it's really, really clear from this. Those short-term case studies spend just short of 40% of their budget typically on video-based media um, and about the bulk on these kind of activation-focused non-video-based media. It's what you'd expect. Whereas long-term campaigns, it's precisely the opposite. These guys spend almost 60% of their budget on, on video-based media and only 40%. It has an enormous impact. This represents billions of pounds, billions of dollars being transferred between brand-building media and activation media simply because we can't see beyond the end of the frigging quarter. Very, very nice business for those who offer short-term media. So it really, really is dangerous.